Look, first of all, uh, I've just got to say the European Super League, this is like a bad smell that you can't get rid of. Uh, the person you were just listening to there from a company called A22 Sports mm. Management, uh, that is a company that is basically backed by three clubs, Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus. Uh, they were the three clubs who were part of the 12 clubs who tried to set up a European uh, Super League uh, 18 months ago. That was a spectacular disaster, mm. fell apart in a matter of days. They've gone away, they've licked their wounds, they haven't given up on this grotesque dream they've got to set up a European Super League. And they've said to themselves, what did we get wrong last time? OK, last time our PR was absolutely terrible. Our communication strategy was atrocious. We need to improve that, which is what they've done by setting up this new A22 sports management company and having quite a slick uh, German uh, man running it and doing these videos and releasing on social media. The other thing that they really, really got wrong was that their league 18 months ago was a closed shop, effectively. Mm. It was going to be 15 clubs who would always be members uh, of the European Super League, plus five clubs who could qualify for it annually. There was a huge backlash against that. So they've come back with these new proposals now, better PR, and they're trying to tell us that there is going to be relegation and promotion. And their dream is now, apparently, to have uh, these European Super Leagues made up of up to 80 teams from across Europe, and apparently there is going to be a little bit of promotion and relegation. But if you actually look at it, it's going to be the same teams playing over and over again. Uh, and uh, what the gentleman there was saying about, uh, you know, European uh, football being in disarray and it was crumbling and only he can save it. Basically, what he's saying is that only Real Madrid, Juventus and Barcelona can save it. They're very, very worried about the power of the Premier League. The Premier League has effectively become uh, the global Super League. And these clubs are desperate to do something about it, which is why they haven't given up uh, on their dream of setting up a European Super League. But <laughs> I want to make this point very, very clearly. Mm. What we're hearing today is... PR. We shouldn't be okay. uh, talking about plans that are going to happen. Uh, this is a PR strategy. This is just going back over what they did 18 months ago. But obviously, a lot of the main players have left now. Uh, the three that are left, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, trying to do it again with better PR and also an element, supposedly, of promotion and relegation. So, this, this dream, any chance of it succeeding or getting further than this last dream of, of a Super League? But to be honest with you, I would say uh, the chances of it happening are between somewhere between slim and none. Uh, to have a European Super League that anyone is ever going to watch, you're going to need to have English clubs in it. So you're going mm -hmm. to need to have Arsenal, Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, uh, you know, Chelsea, the clubs who tried to set up a European Super League 18 months ago. Now, these Premier League clubs cannot join a breakaway league. If you go and look at the new Premier League handbook, the first page of that handbook has got the uh, new Premier League owners' charter. So this is something that all the owners of Premier League clubs have had to sign. And in that charter, point nine says... We are collectively committed to the Premier League and recognise our responsibility to support it. We will not engage in the creation of new competition formats outside the Premier League's rules. So all the Premier League club owners have signed that commitment. They will not be joining a breakaway Super League. The government white paper that is just going to come out, which is going to recommend the setting up of an independent regulator for football, the government in that will make it absolutely clear that clubs cannot join a breakaway Super League either. And the last time they tried it, let's not forget, these clubs all thought it was a fantastic idea. Let's name the clubs. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United and Spurs. It fell apart in a matter of days and they were also fined. So in my opinion, for what it's worth, this is never going to happen because the Premier League clubs cannot join it. It's as simple as that. And what, what A22 Sports Management are basically saying is that UEFA 
uh, is anti-competitive. It's a cartel. Why shouldn't other people be allowed to set up leagues? But effectively, what they want to do is replace one cartel with another cartel. Mm -hmm. So instead of UEFA running the game in Europe, they want it to be run by Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus. OK, I mean, we saw the, 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 the strong... Uh, opinion and reaction to, to this the last time. We saw what the fans thought about it. What reaction have we had uh, already in just a, a short time since this has been announced? Well, well the most eye-catching reaction so far today has been from Spain, La Liga. Okay. Uh, we all know that the president of La Liga, Javier Tebas, is very outspoken. Uh, he's staunchly anti uh, the European Super League. He has uh, you know, made his feelings very, very clear, uh, even though in Spain he's up against two powerful clubs like Real Madrid and Barcelona who are pushing this. Uh, and La Liga um, released a statement this morning, uh, quite a funny statement, that said the Super League is the wolf in the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Mm. It is disguising itself as an open and meritocratic competition, but underneath there is still the same selfish, elitist and greed-driven project. Don't let their tales fool you. Ooh. Which I think sums it up Clever. pretty well. So we've got to remember today is about PR. This has been driven by Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus because effectively they're jealous of the success and power of the English Premier League.